Now it's time for Media Watch, and James Gruden is on set to talk about the latest uh, talk, uh, discussion, uh, whatever's hot on the internet right now, whatever people are, are buzzing uh, about uh, on social media. Um, welcome to the set, James. Thanks, Shona. So uh, in, uh, in, in, in Spain, TV3 Catalan uh, has been taken over uh, by Madrid, uh, and uh, this is a, a very strong move on Madrid's part, right? Definitely. Lots of criticism uh, by, well, Catalans generally. Bearing in mind that uh, I think 25% of those who watch TV news in Catalonia watch the Catalan language state, well, the Catalan state TV news. I think it's got about 11% of the audience across uh, the state of Catalonia. So it's not representative in terms of audience of the whole population of the state. Uh, yet it has been accused uh, by many who are critical of, uh, of the Catalan uh, state government of uh, being very biased in its coverage of events, of not providing a multiplicity of points of view, uh, of not giving enough airtime to those who are actually against independence. So the very uh, abrupt, harsh decision, some would say, by Madrid has been taken to actually go in and take control of uh, the state broadcaster. And you can see here... They're the, really the trying to shut down this independent message as That's much right. as they can, That's in right. every single way they can. Wherever, wherever uh, they feel that there's a, a sort of a voice uh, that is uh, unbiased, they're going to they're gonna try to uh, do what they can in that regard. Now, a lot of French media coverage of it today uh, saying that uh, the uh, Catalan media, Catalan language media, are the collateral victims of this crisis in Catalonia. You've had various people being interviewed uh, in, uh, in, in, the, in the actual uh, TV3, which is the, the TV version of it, one of whom uh, said that they're they are disgusted. There's a lot of surprise uh, within the channel. They didn't think that they would uh, attack such a sensitive object uh, as the state uh, public uh, brought broadcaster and many while they say they won't go on strike they are talking about disobeying the new management that is likely to be uh, brought in uh, Madrid friendly if you like state management uh, the director of news Vincent uh, Sanchez uh, says that they were being accused of indoctrination disseminating false information uh, obviously something he disagrees with but they did say that with so much uh, intense media coverage over the last number of weeks perhaps some mistakes were made and indeed uh, some examples have been given in Le Monde of uh, where they are being criticised is uh, uh, for example uh, during a uh, televised uh, uh, during uh, news coverage of uh, the you know the EU uh, summits and whatnot, when Emmanuel Macron, Macron brought his support uh, to the French government, uh, the the strap at the bottom of the screen was saying uh, under pressure pressure from the Spanish authorities, which of course uh, one could say is perhaps true, but also perhaps speculative, certainly perhaps biased in the way that they were covering it. You've also had two uh, prominent uh, figures, uh, one El País journalist who had been brought on many times onto uh, the airwaves of TV3 and, and elsewhere, who said they are no longer going to participate uh, in the coverage of uh, provided by these news channels because it's simply too uh, biased. These would have been voices against independence, Shona. So there's a lot of tweets as well uh, that I wanted to show you. I'm not sure we're going to have time to go through all of them. Touching without permission is kind of rude. Uh, that's one tweet that is perhaps picking up on another uh, news story we've been hearing a, a lot of uh, uh, recently. No estoca is do not touch. And that, that actually, that slogan has been used a, a few times. Uh, lots of different tweets. Some here saying we have a hundred, over 140 ch TV channels in Catalonia access via the internet to uh, newspapers, radio from around the planet. You're not going to tell me that TV3 uh, is, uh, you know, the only voice that we're hearing. And uh, this is just one final tweet here saying TV3, uh, the uh, language and education should be considered uh, equal. In other words, uh, you know, you shouldn't touch uh, or the, the state broadcaster, nor should you touch language or education. Uh, no estoca at uh, that hashtag there again. Um, there you go. Just There are also, as I say, the voices. This is one in The Guardian uh, in the past couple of weeks saying Catalonia's dreams of secession were incubated in a media cocoon. So there's really two arguments there. Also uh, blaming the media for... That's right. Mm -hmm. For perhaps uh, fomenting uh, right. the desire for independence in an unrealistic yeah. manner. In Paris, it looks like there were fireworks, which I missed last night uh, in Paris. Uh, but some people thought they were gunshots and they got really, really worried. They absolutely did. I actually uh, heard them uh, living in, I suppose, a part of the city adjacent to... Where, uh, where did they take It was place? right around the Champ de Mars by the Eiffel Tower. And it was at okay. midnight, right? Like, on a Sunday night, midnight. Right. So a lot of people. I actually... I'll be a full disclosure. Yeah. I went on Twitter to find out what is going on because right. you could hear all of this noise and this the commotion. The pop, pop, popping. Pop, pop, pop. I thought, hold on, it's Sunday at midnight. What is going on? And like a lot of other people in the city, in the city, 
there was doubts as to whether or not it was fireworks or not. And uh, you can see uh, these are the kind of reactions that I saw uh, last night and today on Twitter. Congratulations to the genius letting off fireworks at midnight on a Sunday. Uh, others saying uh, in French, fire, fire, fireworks at midnight, uh, at, on, on the stroke of midnight, all of Paris is going crazy. Now, here you have the explanation, actually, in this particular tweet. Sense8, uh, the, the series, which is available on at Netflix FR, as well as other Netflix, there was a big... Uh, season finale and this was part of the filming of their season finale oh. uh, on the Champ de Mars. Now, uh, if you look at the media coverage today, even though the, the Paris City Hall, there was a lot of criticism oh, yeah. for insufficient uh, information. information. Yeah. Well, they, they did kind of, uh, I suppose, um, point out that local uh, residents around the Champ de Mars uh, were, were the, the, in, the, in their buildings and whatnot. They were notified. But, uh, but the sound goes so much further than just the people living around there. Absolutely. And indeed, uh, the, the, no the, the, the sound, right. the, the, I suppose if you saw it in the sky, you, you knew what was you happening. Would, yeah. But let me tell you, uh, I saw for 10 or 15 or 20 minutes uh, on social media last night a lot of uh, confusion and indeed a lot of anger being expressed. People saying, uh, well, if I could find one tweet that I'll finish with, uh, the memories of the 13th of November right. are still too fresh. Yes. Anne Hidalgo uh, were not ready for fireworks at midnight in Paris on a random day like the 22nd of October yes. because, you know, I certainly was kind of thinking, 22nd of October, does that have any significance? Is this some... You know, is this some Independence Day somewhere? Right. Have people been setting Did off fireworks? Did we miss a holiday? What's going on? Right. Well, actually, it was just uh, All right, thank Sensei you. season thank finale. You. Thank you so much. James Creedon there making Thanks, sense of what's going on in real life as well as on the internet.